mini test number 57. So we are already here. So for this mini test, as you can see, the pulsation today is the Edwards 270A-SPO. Local alarm version that is, which was made in 1989. Which I actually found this out by wherever I left the screwdriver. Let's go first. Okay, found it. So you go in here, and it's really hard to see, but that says. Well, let me get a light. Pull out my flashlight. Okay. You can probably see right there, 0289. So I'm assuming this was made on the second week of 89, maybe? But, I have this pull station for a reason. And you might already know if you remember that listing I got. That lot, that is. So, there's nothing on this side. And no, I don't have another um, 27A-SPO. I actually gave the other two to two friends of mine, so I apologize. <laughs> I'm also, by the way, selling my um, 270-GAO, if anyone's interested. Um, check out my e eBay page. I'm actually selling a, other, a couple other items, but not trying to promote anything. Anyway, let's just get back to the system. First of all, we bring back the WST-24. That's right. And you might already know why I bring back this device. It's because it's the only WST-24 I have right now. And the only true remote strobe non ada wheel lock device. Yes, I know I have the SS-24M by System Sensor that's also non ada but it's not wheel lock. So. And you might already see, oh, you can probably already see what this is. This is the SFP-R trim plate and yes, a 7002T. Now this might look like a regular 7002T to you. Um, you are going to find out something about this device that makes it rather unique. And this 7002T, as a matter of fact, was brought back to me by Frosted Strobes. By the way, I also um, gave Frosted Strobes um, my 27A-SPO. If, if you were curious, Someday he'll probably use that pole station, but yeah, it's a good pole station. Definitely recommend these. And what's good about them is I don't think that's a security screw, but if any of you guys know, I really, really, really dislike the security screw model 270-SPOs, that Edwards SPOs that is, or GAOs or whatever. These pole stations basically with the security screw, hate them because my, you might already know what happened to my 270-SPO with the security screw. <sighs> a lot of talking. System sensor 2151 remains. And so does the panel and the magnets and the whole wiring mess. Well, not really, but still, I could do a better job. And that's pretty much it. I'm also gonna make a, two, um, a system test 57.5 and all I'm gonna do Let's just take down this device and put up another 7002T. I know what you're saying. I'm probably repeating a mini test that I did not that long ago. And that was with the Pyrotronics HSD-24, but hey, why not? So I'm gonna set this down and put in my hearing protection. Uh, if I can actually set this down correctly. I'll set it right over here, okay. Turn up the fan. This is very, very loud, by the way. I'm actually going to pull up that 7002T I mentioned, just so it's ready. All right. Okay, on the hair protection. Okay. And here's the 7002T, by the way. I will need this screwdriver. All right, let's pull, pull the 270-270A-SPO. Three, two, one. This is on March time.
No, you are not seeing things. Yes, that is correct. Thanks to frosted strobes. So this was the 7002T that had the broken strobe. If you remember, I got three 7002Ts. One came with a broken strobe. This is that one. So, again, thanks to frosted strobes, this now has a light attachment, which is really awesome. But in reality, by the way, Wheelock would never put a light in their fire alarms. And that is due to a patent number. You're welcome to do the research, but I found this out. It's on here somewhere. It's gotta be, this is the good stuff. Also my other 7002T, by the way, went to um, vintage fire alarm guy. Shout out to him. Um, right there, patent number 4101880. You can search up that patent number. But that basically states why Wheelock never used lights in their fire alarms. They were always their um, xenon strobes. And that goes back to 1970, um, oh gosh, 75, I think? 74? Really long time. So, um, I'm going to change the coating. I'll be quick. Let's go into, let's do code 3. I just hit reset without even changing anything. I'm going to set the camera down. Okay. Mode, program mode, password. I apologize for this kind of crappy video. It's not, but still. Someday I should do two stage. That's kind of fun. Okay. I'm going to quote, quote, key activate the this. There you go. Oh my gosh, that's loud. I was thinking of putting this 7002T with this guy, but I, I'm, <laughs> that's just gonna be whacking. That's gonna just be too loud. Also, mini test 50 for anyone wondering. Ha ha ha. We're gonna do steady. Yes, you see, you saw that right. We're gonna do steady, and that will be it. So. Oh yeah, and I also mentioned that I was going to introduce the device that I was getting pretty soon. But it's not here yet. As a matter of fact, the seller hasn't even shipped it out yet. But that's going to happen. Hopefully. But that will happen in mini test number 58. This will stay, and a new device will be put there. And I'll take this out. Here we go. This will be loud. Ay, 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 that's really loud. Okay. So, that is going to conclude it for mini test number 57. I am pretty sure it's mini test number 57. Try not to make that mistake with the mini test number 54 or whatever. Then it was mini test number 55. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Once again, for the devices. Edwards 270A-SPL, Wheelock WST-24, and the SFP-R Trimplate, but <laughs> the Wheelock 7002TL-24, L being the light attachment, because it now has a light. So, see you in the next mini test, and as always, thanks for watching.